Welcome to Natech Engineering. Today we are doing Dynamics, Engineering Science and Form. And we will start this topic with an exercise which reads as follows. A 10 kg box is pulled to the right by a horizontal force of 300 newtons. A frictional force of 80 newtons opposes it. And then we are given questions. They say, number A, calculate the net force acting on the box. Number B, what is the acceleration? And number C, they say, what will be the distance traveled by the box after 25 seconds? And this is the information that we are given. We are given the mass of the box and we are told that the box is being pulled to the right with a force of 300 newtons. That will be our applied force. And we have the force that opposes the motion of the box, which is frictional force. We know frictional force always opposes motion. And then question number one, they say calculate the net force acting on the box net force net force is the sum of all the forces that are acting on the object whatever object that we are working with so looking at this box we have two forces now we will take the direction of the applied force as the positive direction and we will take the direction of the frictional force as the negative direction since the frictional force is the one that is opposing the movement of the box the box is moving in that direction therefore we will take this direction as a, a positive so we will say net force is equal to the force applied minus the frictional force and we are going to get 300 minus 80 which will give us 220 newtons this is the effective force that will get the box from point a to point b now we can tell that the force applied was 300 but since we had a frictional force of 80 80 newtons from this 300 was used to cancel out with the frictional force that's why we will end up with a force of 220 newtons that is the net force which is the effective force on the box and then we go to question number two they say what is the acceleration according to newton's second law of motion we know that f net is equals to ma which is the mass and acceleration we have the net force we have the mass so we can get the acceleration we will substitute which will uh, will have two two zero it's equals to the mass which is 10 and a this will give us an acceleration of 22 meters per second square the acceleration is in that direction and then we we'll go to number c they say what will be the distance traveled by the body after 25 seconds now we are given the time number c this is number b number a this is number c we are given the time as 25 seconds we are asked to calculate the distance which is s now we will use one of the formulas of motion which will be S being our distance, it's equals, uh, it's equals to U T, which is the time, plus half A T squared. Now we know that since we are not given the initial velocity of the object, we take it as if the object was, was accelerated from rest. Therefore, its initial velocity will be zero meters per second which is this value here and since this is zero we know this will fall off and then we are left with half a we have a which is 22 times the time which is 25 squared and we are going to get a distance of 6857 meters which can be written as 6.875 k 
kilometers. So this is an example of a body that is resting on a horizontal plane. What if now we are given a question where our body is resting on an inclined plane? This is our body with mass m. And this is the angle of incline, which is theta. We know now that we will have a force which is the normal force before any force is applied to the object these are the forces that we are going to have we will have the normal force and we are going to have weight which is always on the negative y-axis now we know that for an object to remain at rest the forces that are acting on that object must be in equilibrium so looking at this normal force if there is a normal force acting to that direction there must also be a force that will balance the normal force so now we are going to have a force that will be acting in this direction we are going to throw a triangle here with this being our 90 degrees it's a right angle triangle and this angle will be equal to this angle. Let's take the triangle out. This is mg. This will be x and this will be y. And this is theta. Now using our trick ratios, which is soccer tor. We want to get the value of x and y in terms of mg. We know that if a force is acting at an angle, it will develop two components. Those values that we are looking for here is the value of the horizontal component and the vertical component of this force, which is mg. And we will say, using cos, we are going to get, we are going to we are going to get the value of x which will be cos the adjacent is x cos theta the hypotenuse is mg and this will give us x as equals to mg cos theta and our y will be sine it's equals to opposite which is y divided by the hype which will be mg and y it's equals to mg sine theta this force will be the force that will balance the normal force therefore the normal force it's equals to mg cos theta but this is not that important in this section so we are more interested in this force we are interested in the forces that are acting parallel to our plane so this force is acting in that direction it is equal to a force called fg which is the force that is that is trying to get this body from the top to the bottom due to gravitational acceleration since we know that this it's the vertical component of the mg so from there we can say the value of fg is equals to mg sine theta and this force is always acting in that direction no matter which direction the the, the body will be moving to this fg will always act, will always be acting in this direction and then depending on where is the body moving to we will have a frictional force let's say the body it's going up the incline we will have a frictional force which is going at the opposite direction since we know that f the frictional force will always oppose this motion and then we'll also have applied force which is 
more likely to be at the direction which the body is moving. Now, due to the height of the body above our reference point, which is this line here, we are going to develop, the body is going to develop um, potential energy, which is the energy a body possesses due to its height above a reference point. And it is given by mg h as a unit is joules. And we will have another form of energy, which is kinetic energy. And kinetic energy is the energy that a body possesses due to its velocity. Due to velocity. And it's given by half mv squared. And according to the law of conservation of energy, we can conclude that loss in EP It's equals to gain in the kinetic energy. This is according to the law of conservation of energy. Since we know that energy cannot be destroyed nor created. It, it can only be transferred from one form to another. And that is basically everything that we are going to need in this section. Yeah. That's basically the end of our lesson today. I will see you on the next lesson where we will be doing an exercise based on what we have learned here.